Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about what is in failure and then we will classify the failures and then we will know that why this classification is necessary to check recovery as a technique. We can say there are several types of failure from a system. What do you mean by a failure? That a transaction is unable to complete its normal execution either by a partial commit or a commitment. Now we can see that a partial commit on a transaction can only go for the commitment in this way that the persistent result after the partial commitment of the transaction has been a consistent one on the next part of the transaction. See for if we are performing an commit after three of the operations on a transaction. That means still now we have completed the transaction successfully and the result will not affect the rest of this transaction's operation in such a way that it will give us an inconsistent result. So in that way only we can perform the commit or go to the completion of the transaction. So either a transaction is partially committed, it will go to a failed state or a committed state. Now when it goes to a failed state, that means the transaction that were partially committed, unable to complete its transaction in an atomic statistics and the atomic way. Now when we are talking about this atomicity and consistency, then we must know that what type of failure it is happening. So we can have a number of failures that is associated with the transaction. We will now discuss about one or two or the major failure classification. The first one is in transaction failure. Now the transaction can fail its normal execution by any of the following methods. The first one is a logical error. So the logical error goes with the transaction is partially committed or it has been started from its execution. Now there is some bad input, some logical error like this bad input or we can have a partial exhausted result or we can have that the transactions cannot have enough sufficient data to continue with this operation. So this type of problem, if it results with a transaction failure, then we can say that a logical error has occurred. The next is in system error. The system error is goes for if the transaction loses its consent, that means it is now being in a transaction which is being performed by the system, there is some bug in that particular database software system or the operating system that made the transaction to halt that execution. So if the transaction is aborted for that case, then we can say there is a system error for the transaction. Now for the system error, the transaction can be re-executed at a later time when the problem will be solved. But for the logical error, we need to redefine the transaction in such a way that the logic will be corrected now. Next is the system crash. Now when we were talking about system crash, that means the transaction was performing its normal execution and now it has gone to some deadlock state or in a state that the system cannot afford to execute the transaction. Say for it cannot fetch the data from this database for the disk or memory or there is an operating system error, any hardware or software system error that we cannot recover from it. So now we need to abort the transactions. So this type of problem during the transaction execution is known as a system crash. Now the next one is a disk problem. Now the disk issue or the disk failure goes for if there is a disk that is storing and persistent data go for an head crash or there is the copying time problem. That means the data has been copying from one data disk to another one and now in the midst of copying the data, there is a problem that is happening between this disk. So now there is a disk error. So now this error can be solved by having this disk as a DVD or any hard disk or any flash type by storing the data repeatedly.
So the redundant data can also use for having the disk storage or the disk crashes issues. Now we can say that the system has gone for an hardware and software bug problem that is the in-memory problem that will not affect the data that is stored into the disk that is in secondary storage is known as in fail stop assumption. So now what is in fail stop assumption? By assumption in and that way that the disk will not be affected by a hardware and software bug. Mm -hmm. Now the hardware and software bug can be corrected from the non-volatile storage of memory and also it can be corrected from the volatile storage that is the ROM or the primary memory. So this fail stop assumption is a reasonable one. Now that to recover from a particular failure, there are several steps. First, we need to know what are the types of the failure. That means the classification of the failure so that we can better dig at that particular problem rather than just searching all the place for getting the problem. So if it is for a logical error, then we need to redefine the transaction. If it is in a system error, then we need to go for the deadlock prevention or the deadlock avoidance. If it is a system crash, then we go for the hardware or software bug solving. And if it is in disk error, then we will go for that copying the data for another disk to store it in a redundant storage. Now after that we have classified each type of failure and to see that which category my failure belongs to, now we can perform the recovery algorithm or recovery techniques based on the failure. So now my recovery techniques will insist of two things. The first one is during the normal execution of a transaction, it must ensure that it is storing sufficient data to recover if there is any failure to the transaction. And the second one is during a failed transaction, after the transaction has failed, we must have from the database or this disk storage that some data or the sufficient data to recover from the failure to get the database in a persistent, atomic, consistent, and durable state. So in this way, we can classify our failure and then go for a look at a particular classification on which we can provide our recovery algorithm to perform and get the data back to the database. So that is all for the failure classification. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.